Another option we could use, as part of our research procedures, is the survey method. Most of the time, this involves self-report measures, like questionnaires, tests, or structured interviews, that ask participants about their innermost thoughts, feelings, and experiences, including how they have behaved in the past, or how they predict they would act in a hypothetical situation. Some researchers also use what are called other report measures to ask the participants' family, friends, colleagues, bosses, and so on, to answer questions about them. It's common for these measures to ask people to respond to each item using a scale, from 0 to 5, for example. Some questions are open-ended, and the researchers code and categorize responses later. We might ask people how much they like working in a group, how frequently they communicate with their coworkers, or how they would mediate conflict between teammates. We often use self-report measures when we're interested in processes at the individual level. The major challenge of this method is the accuracy of the data. Its reliability and validity can be impaired by a variety of factors, including distorted memories, confusing questions, unclear instructions, and survey fatigue. Another challenge with self-report measures is social desirability. The tendency for people to lie or alter the truth to protect their self-esteem. This happens at both conscious and unconscious levels, meaning we aren't always aware of it. If we asked Olympic team members how often do they experience dysfunctional conflict during practices and games, some members may feel pressured to downplay reality to maintain the USA's reputation. Others may forget some of the disagreements they experienced, or some may try to avoid mentioning the conflict that they instigated. Fortunately, there are plenty of strategies we can use to improve data accuracy. First, there's a science to how we create surveys. We consider its purpose, whether we'll use it to gather research data, improve communication, or evaluate a recent change. We also consider time, personnel, and budgetary constraints. Next, we identify the right content for the survey and write questions that elicit the information we want. Then, we test the survey with a small pilot group and make adjustments before collecting data from participants. At each stage of the survey design process, we make plenty of decisions, but poor decisions can threaten the integrity of the measure and our study. Second, the accuracy of self-report data is dependent on the representativeness of the sample. The more the sample represents its population, the more confident we can be that our conclusions apply to the population. Random sampling is one way of doing this. It means everyone in the population has an equal chance of being selected to participate in the study. This is different from random assignment, because it concerns who is invited. Random assignment, on the other hand, concerns how participants, who have already been selected, are assigned to experimental conditions. Third, the bogus pipeline technique is another way to improve the accuracy of self-report data. Participants are hooked up to a lie detector, and although the device is not used to verify their answers, they are led to believe so. While some experts might argue this technique violates ethical standards, others suggest it's effective at minimizing social desirability responding. Again, check with your IRB. In general, people are more likely to tell the truth when they believe their answers can be verified, either by a fake lie detector or by using other report measures. Returning to our example of Zuri and Rato's experiments, they asked participants to fill out a three-page self-report questionnaire that measured their group identification as part of one of the independent variables, as well as their impressions of the target in a fictional story, the dependent variable.